This is a chronicle of my Orange Storm Giga slash Blue Storm Terra conversion. It's not an official tutorial. It's just what I did to go from a stock Giga to getting a print. The video is choppy and jumps around quite a bit. It's my first time building a printer or doing anything of this scale. I've provided links to all the products, parts, and tools that I've used in the description below, most on Amazon, and I have links below to the sample printer configuration files that I used as well. I know it's choppy, but there's really not much on doing this conversion that I can find on YouTube, so hopefully it helps someone in the process. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If I gloss over any parts, use GPT or Google to elaborate on certain things. All the printed parts are on my Maker World as well. If I can do this, I promise that you can too. Basic overview, I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi to tell the MCU what to do. That's the Big Tree Tech Kraken, and the Big Tree Tech Kraken talks to the Big Tree Tech EVB42 on the tool head. For tool head assembly, just follow Luke's lab's guide. It's very involved and quite complete. Basically, you're just saving the fans and also the Elegoo tool board if you decide to go that route, but I would recommend getting the EVB42. Got the full kit from Luke's, including the beacon, and the tube conduction heater. I did use thermal compound on the tube between the tube and the frame. This is for heat dissipation, but it seems to me after running the printer for a little bit that the tube probably could use its own fan mounted to the front. I may do that in the future. Here I am installing the Elegoo tool board, but again, later I removed this and opted for the EBB42. I have the adapter bracket that mounts the LGX Pro to the EBB42 on my Maker World. But assembling the tool head is pretty easy. I went ahead and attached the print head to the machine while I worked on the rest of the parts. You will have to disassemble the entire cable chain, all of them. This is tedious, it will take a long time. Just be careful when you're unclipping everything. Here I am removing the heat beds. I did do the rigid modification, but I ended up using springs, a combination of springs and rigid standoffs in the end. At a bare minimum, remove the two right side heat beds so you can access the electronics bay. Now as of current, I have about a 0.5 millimeter range on my bed meshing, so I hope to improve that in the future. Go ahead and remove the Elegoo MCU, keep track of the wires, most of them are already labeled. I also removed the ethernet, the antenna, both front fans, the Y motor driver, basically everything in the front part of the electronics bay. I didn't keep the one fan because I did my own modification with a blower fan. Next, attach the Kraken to the mount. I have a slimmed down version on my Maker World that fits in between the different standoffs in the electronics bay, and I just held it down with double-sided 3M tape. You can refer to this general wiring setup, although your mileage may vary. Refer back and forth to the Kraken's pinout map to know exactly where to put things, and I would recommend using ChatGPT or something like that to keep track of your various wires and where you plug them in. So when you go back to do your printer.cfg, it's all cleanly held in one place. Also be sure to terminate your CAN bus with the 120 ohm resistor on both ends. I do recommend verifying continuity between all the wires back and forth from the board all the way to where they go quite often. Use a multimeter. So going through and installing all the rigid standoffs, once again, I did end up using a combination of springs and rigid standoffs. The rigid ones just help me keep a zero and the springs are good for problem areas. So I attached the EBB42 to the side of the LGX Pro, the adapter bracket, once again, on my Maker World, print it in ABS or nylon. You will need to adapt several cables throughout this process, JST, PHs to XHs. You'll also need to adapt the XT30 2 plus 2 into Molex for the EBB42. Use the jeweler's headset. It is an absolute lifesaver. And in this process, I eventually quit using the crimp tool and started to crimp everything manually with the jeweler's headset. I got much better connections doing it that way.
For adapting the main tool head cable, I just went ahead and cut off the end of this XT32 Plus 2, the main cable, because it is a thicker gauge than the one that comes off the distribution boards. I'm not gonna be running four different print heads on this, so I just went ahead and cut this off and adapted it in. I did use these little solder connectors to make good connections, and this part doesn't really move. I did zip tie it down pretty securely, so in the course of printing, this thing really does not move, so the solder working itself apart really doesn't concern me too much. Look in the description below over to my Raspberry Pi enclosure. I did opt to go with a 10 inch screen on this so I could manage the printer while I'm at it. You can mount your Raspberry Pi in the electronics bay if you choose to do so. Just be sure to connect the USB for the Kraken, the U a USB extender for the beacon or directly plug in the beacon, power and a USB webcam if you prefer. Raspberry Pi 5 is not required. Raspberry Pi 4 will work just fine. Next, you'll need to install and configure the Raspberry Pi with the main sail onto the micro SD. Use the Pi Imager to do this. GPT is great for shepherding you through this process. It's pretty basic. Also, Esoterical's guide, link in the description below, will be used for a majority of this build. And I believe he walks you through that process as well. The Chad GPT is good for very general stuff like this. Once your Pi is set up, go ahead and SSH into it. Install clipper screen so your touch screen will work and connect a keyboard to the Pi if you want to run terminal commands while you're at the machine. I would recommend setting up your workstation next to the machine so you can press the boot buttons, the DFU buttons, etc. Follow Esoterical's guide to flash, catapult, and clipper onto both the MCU, the Kraken, and the EBB42 toolboard. Be sure to follow the configuration on Esoterical's guide very closely. Once you verify Catapult and Clipper are both flashed onto the MCU and toolboard, you can begin your configuration files. And once again, I am grossly unqualified to give any advice on this, especially on configuration. But for what it's worth, I set mine up with a printer.cfg, an EBB canbus.cfg with all the tool head settings and a macro CFG. The main printer CFG file refers to the EBB42's CFG file for everything on the tool head. Some final notes that I picked up throughout this process. Once again, remove everything from the front part of the electronics bay. You don't really need it anymore. I used a spare blower fan to force air over the Kraken and deeper into the bay. This is a blower fan off of one of the spare Giga tool, he uh, tool heads. I also jumped power from the main terminals over to the motor power rail with a 16 gauge computer PSU cable on spade connectors. You could also run it directly from the PSU. My print head is powered directly from the PSU. I repurposed the power connectors from one of the previous motor drivers. I believe it was the Y motor driver. An infrared camera is very helpful in this process to identify any hot spots or just generally to make sure everything's running pretty good, to look for signs of heat creep. These are good for various other types of projects around the house. I highly recommend getting one. Now the Giga has two Z motors left and right side and both connect by a belt to the two Z screws. As such, the left and right should always be level with each other no matter what. But mine wasn't, mine was off pretty badly so I had to correct for this. The Z tilt adjust levels left to right but not back to front. I did this by measuring the distance between the gantry and the very top of the frame. And so to correct, I removed the lugs from from the hub, held it up, adjusted it. After that, you run Z tilt shift to get it level from left to right. I don't expect anyone else to really encounter this issue, but it is worth verifying. Use the beacon guide for setup. Luke's site recommends to be within 0.2 millimeters across the bed. I stopped at 0.5 to preserve my sanity. Additionally, the LGX Pro settings say that your rotation distance should be 7.805, but mine was off after testing it. I also consider the Infinity Flow to be basically a prerequisite for this machine. It's an automatic filament reloader. Buy it with my link in the description below. You will not regret it. Additionally here, their new filament cutters V2 already saved this print from being ruined because one of the spools got hung up, but the automatic filament cutter senses this and go ahead and cuts it so it can start into the next spool. Additionally, on the stock Giga, I would run PLA at 220, upwards of 230 degrees, but the tube has more heating area, so it doesn't need these high temperatures. I'm doing my PLA now at 190 degrees. It took me a while to figure this out. 
Of course, my blog has more ongoing detail with what I'm doing with the machine, so I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel and follow along in the process. I think only time will tell if this was worth doing, but given all the parts are really high quality and it's on basic clipper, I'm pretty optimistic. The initial results are very promising. Quality improves as my knowledge grows in this. Once again, I appreciate all the comments everyone's giving me on it. So let me know in the comments if you think you'd try this with your Orange Storm Giga or if you think this guide helps. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching on the technicals. See you next time.